Welcome to the No Name Brand Podcast. My name is Sashka Hanarapal, actress, singer, dancer, turned brand marketing sales and advertising strategist who brands your soul. And each week I bring you an inspiring person or message to help you discover your undergod. Turn up your leadership notches, challenge the status quo, because you're fast and furious with a powerful message to share with the world. Thank you for taking time out with me today. And without further ado, let's get our creative and wisdom juices for low wall. Howdy doody folks, and welcome back to this week's episode. I do hope that all of you have been reaching towards the stars, growing, expanding in your awesomeness. And if not, that's also okay. Sometimes we grow in the messy bits too. It's just not as easy. Speaking of messy, who can remember being really messy as a kid, wearing messy clothes, eating messy, just enjoying being a kid and having others clean up after you? Yep, I remember those days too. And for some of us, we grow up still being messy, but in a drab way. We dress drab, eat drab and carry ourselves drab. Our next guest was just that, drab on the inside and outside. And at 45 years old, She looked at herself in a drab librarian outfit, no offense against this look, overweight, unhappy, and overworked, and called herself out. (coughs) Enough is enough. One year later, and you wouldn't recognize our next guest. It was like a can of rainbow paint spilled its gorgeousness all over her. She went from living a black and white life, remember that movie, to a life filled with color, zest, and oomph. QN Tigger here. At 10 years old, our next guest, who was raised in Scandinavia in the feminist 70s, wasn't allowed to wear pink, and she was finally allowed a Barbie doll. She set out to make Barbie a killer wardrobe, which was super easy because her head could be pulled off and you didn't need buttons or zippers. Ta-da! She was in the zone. Then she went on to sew her first pair of pants at the age of 12. I think I threw my first sewing machine out of the window at that age. She was forced to use her imagination to look cool when her parents refused to buy her those crazy expensive brand of clothes that all teenagers wanted. Creative work makes here the world go round, but that's not her mission. Her mission is to show all women how to fall head over heels in love with their own body, no matter what size or age, and to help millions of women discover the essence of their souls so they can express on the outside who they truly are on the inside. I am excited to delve into today's episode. So what do you say we wave our colorful flags and welcome the one, the only, Hilda Fawson! Hello, Hilda! Hello, Sashka! Oh my God, you are the world's best person at introductions! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you! How are you today? I'm feeling absolutely fabulous. The sun is shining here at the North Pole in Norway, and I'm just really looking forward to chatting with you, Sasha. Yeah, me too. You bloody lucky the sun's shining with you. And we drenched in rain again. Bloody help sometimes. So tell me. What do you love about fashion? What rocks and floats your boat? What I absolutely love about fashion is that it's such a creative expression. Colors really makes you feel a certain way. You can pretend to be a different person just by dressing that way. And it's such a great way to signalize who you are and what you stand for so that random strangers can just take one look at you and they can just see, oh my God, this person really gets me. I have to talk to this person. And that's what happened to me when I landed on your website, Sashka, because (laughs) you are wearing this super cool, crazy hat in your photo. And I just knew, oh my God. I love her. She could be my best friend. I want to know everything about her. (laughs) That's so freaking cool. You're speaking of colors. And for me, my favorite color is black. Like I love black. And I found out only recently because I don't know why that black is a spiritual color for everything. It's like the all colors. And I'm like, what? And I love wearing pop colors. And I always felt to feel like this is a taboo, like, you know, wearing black and you shouldn't wear black. Not you shouldn't wear black, but black is drab type of thing. And then I look at you and your vibrancy, and then I feel a little bit underdressed. In fact, one of my favorite dressed women to date, Bazoma St. John, 
Tiffany Allen and Jada Pinkett Smith. I love the way these women dress. And JLo, I just love their style and look. Do you come across many women who shy away from your vibrancy because they may feel a little bit insecure, like so much color, oh my God, I don't know if I can carry that. And how do you deal with that or do you want to deal with that? Okay, so first of all, I would just say that we all have our different styles and it's so, so, so important to be truly honest about who we are. And me, wearing pink and being vibrant, that's me. But I have loads and loads of clients who have a totally different style. I don't think I ever style a single person in anything that resembles my own look. So I do actually get a lot of clients who get the fact that I'm not going to make them look like me. Even if I happen to be, have a bit of a cliche look, being blonde and wearing pink, you know, it's like the Barbie doll type. So that really works really well. And I do colors for a lot of people. And I would say that technically, black doesn't always work that well for light-skinned people. But that's the technical side. I mean, that's when you, if you look at it really objectively, okay, so Sashka's very best colors would be a bit brighter and all of that. But even if I do people's colors, and even if I teach people how to dress for their body type so it looks really slim, that's not my number one purpose. Because the number one thing you have to think about is what you want to communicate. For you, Sashka, you know you have such a powerful, strong brand, so I totally get it that black is your color. And, <laughs> and oh, that's pretty interesting. Cool. Yes. And I have lots of clients who wear black as well, even if technically they shouldn't do it. And I just style a really cool coach. She's like, I call her the kick-ass New York coach. She's like this power woman. And her whole website is bright yellow and black, which is like, these colors are really hard to wear. It's, it's not her ideal colors, but that's who she is. So that's what she wears. So wow. yeah, what you communicate is always number one. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Cool. So I just work with my pop color. And oh, it's yeah. interesting that the women that I love, how they dress, they do not wear black. I mean, they are, f and actually, interestingly enough, they're black in skin, but their clothes are really, oh, fuck, I just love the way their clothes are. I'm just like, oh, how do you carry that? That is so freaking amazing. Their hair, I have hair envy. I'm like, I want, I want Afro. It looks so cool. I want turbans. It looks cool. And I did a photo shoot with turbans and I was like, no, it doesn't suit me. It doesn't look very good. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> but, but lots of people have style icons Some people are fascinated by, but then maybe that person, I should say, maybe their skin color is different or their hair is different. So what you need to do is that you really have to analyze what is it actually that I love about it? Mm. So when it comes to JLo, it could be the fact her clothes are always very simple. Maybe it's the fact that she looks so polished because like yeah. she has this natural but sophisticated makeup and her hair is always smooth and she's ultra feminine in that Latina look mm -hmm. that Europeans don't always know how to pull off. So if that's it, then you could do the exact same thing uh, wearing black clothes. Oh, I love that. Yes, that's what I like, polished. I'm just getting some personal styling here on the podcast. <laughs> Lovely. So tell me, what is it about fashion that you either love or hate? Okay, so I was a fashion designer for 20 years. And there are a lot of things in the fashion industry that I never liked. And I'm so happy that I was able to find a new career where I lay all the premises myself. Just the fact of fast fashion, getting people to buy new stuff all the time. That's not what I really stand for. We have to consider the environment and sustainability. So I really love the fact that if you find the style that you really love, then you can buy high quality clothes and keep them from years and be really, really happy. You don't have to follow every new trend. You don't have to wear what everyone else is wearing. And I also really, really love it when companies create high quality products that last a while. Is this why you decided not to go into direction like haute couture or pret-à-porter or something and decided to go on your own or not on your own, in your direction? What was the decision or the pivotal moment? Not really a pivotal moment, but I have a lot of friends from fashion school who started their own fashion companies. You know, I always worked for other companies, like big chain stores and things like that. But I realized that most people think if you're a designer, then you should make your own line. That should be your big goal in life. But I realized that that is almost impossible to make it. The competition is so fierce. And it costs so much money because if you design a collection, 
then you have to pay the factories to produce that maybe six months before you get paid by your clients. So all my friends that have these companies, they have to get bank loans for millions. And there's also the fact that fashion changes so fast. I remember creating these amazing collections. And then they get in the store, you're super happy, and you see people in the street wearing your clothes, which is fantastic. But then three months later, they're all on the sales rack. You know, everything's stuffed together because then it's a new season. And the amazing products that were like so fantastic three months ago, now they're worth nothing. And when I realized that I could work online and create digital courses that I could sell over and over again, I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so much better. <laughs> That is so, I mean, fashion's been around for ages, like age, it's not even something that you can say, oh, it's only been around like the last two decades or anything. It's been around for eons. Why is there such a fascination with fashion? Why do you think men and women have such, is it because of the way that we express ourselves or that we can express ourselves? It's got so, so many different levels to it. The level that I love to work with, it's an expression of who you really are. And one thing that's really interesting is that when I have uh, clients go through my product where they find their style, where they nail their style, is that they understand so much about themselves on a much deeper level. Because if, for instance, you're choosing between two different dresses, then each of those dresses are going to represent different parts. And you can say, okay, so I like that dress because it's more rock and roll and that's who I really am. And I don't want that dress because that is too corporate. And I was in corporate for Asians. That's not where I'm going. So you have these clothes represent visually things that are going on in your life and going on in your mind. And that can sometimes make it, make it easier to understand your own psychology. Yeah, that's so true. And I just met someone the other day, well, a few weeks ago, who mentioned, because you were speaking about the fashion industry and how expensive it is, how someone was trying to start vegan clothing and how expensive that was and taking out the loans. Did you attempt to have your own business as well with a fashion line? Did you start it and then get the experience? And were there any aha moments where you were like, no, not going this direction? Or did you go straight into just working for big chain stores and then starting your business? I went straight to the big chain stores. And that's actually something, not really going to chain stores. It doesn't really matter what you do. But for anyone who comes from fashion school and want to start their own fashion line, then I actually do recommend working for someone else in the beginning because there's so much about business you have to learn that you don't learn in fashion school. So mm-hmm. I would do that. And in Sweden, they have a lot of very cool independent brands these days. And almost every single woman who's created her own brand has been working for H&M oh, um, wow. at the start. Yeah, mm. That's pretty interesting. So what do yeah. you learn from a business perspective that you wouldn't learn in fashion school what are they not teaching in fashion school okay in fashion school they don't teach you about production which is a really 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 big part of it Uh, finding factories being able to communicate to the factories how the clothes should look because the biggest problem with clothes is sometimes that they don't really fit your body that well and that is one of the biggest issues when it comes to producing good clothes you have to get the factories to do the fit right And then you have to get them to dye your special colors. You have to get all the samples on time for the fashion fair, which is a really difficult thing. Get them to work really fast to finish it. Then there's marketing and publicity, which is the same that we do in online business. And you know, that's a big job. That's a big job. You were speaking about working with the production companies and their sizes and everything. Now, when someone works with you online, you're not physically going with them into a store and helping them try on clothes. So how does it work that they're choosing or that your clients are able to choose clothes that are not necessarily fit them, but their body type or where do you send them off to or how do you shop together? How does it work, Hilda? Okay, okay. <laughs> so we always start with nailing their style and branding. Mm -hmm. And some clients that I work with, they are far ahead and they already know their brand, maybe working with a branding expert like you and that have a boards and colors and all of that. And then I help them find the clothes to go with that. And some women are so new to business that they haven't gone through that route. And that's when I do like a mini branding with them so that they get their first brand before their photo shoot, for instance. Then I guide them through my body confidence course where they learn how to dress by their body type. 
So this is a very good old technique that we've seen on, on TV shows like What Not to Wear and all of that. What I hate about the old systems is that they call you ugly names like pear shape and apple yeah. shape. And, oh, I hate that. So I created brand new names. So cool. yeah. So if you're like me or like Jennifer Lopez, then you are the Boodalicious Babe. <laughs> I'm a Boodalicious Babe. Yeah. <laughs> and the apple type I call the gazelle. Cool. And strong woman is the power woman. The tall type is the Olympian. And the voluptuous type is the bombshell. Okay. So it just makes everyone so happy to have a pretty inspiring name for their That's body. True. That's yeah. true. And then how do you choose the clothes and everything? Yeah. And then we get on the call and discuss everything, all the nitty gritty and come up with a plan. So sometimes I help people just because they want to change their wardrobe. And sometimes it's because they have a photo shoot or a speaking gig or want to start making videos or something like that. And then we come up with a plan and then they go shopping and send me photos from the changing room. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it works surprisingly well because when I started that business, I was like, oh my God, is it actually going to work? <laughs> and then it works like magic. Like I was styling a woman, an American woman from New York. She is a travel blogger. And she had a photo shoot with an American photographer in London. And she sent me photos from the fitting room in Bali. Oh, <laughs> so, and that, that works like magic. She has like best photos possible from London. That is so cool. I love that. Is dressing up and showing your personality from the outside, does it need to be expensive? Because you have quite a lot of experience. So when someone's trying on clothes, what we tend to do or the perception is, oh my God, personal branding and styling. Mm -hmm. I need to go like spend a lot of money and then they don't know where to start. And then it starts getting overwhelming. How are you calming the situation? Going, Hold up, girl. Hold up. <laughs> okay. First of all, what's amazing if you're doing photos is that you can't see how expensive the clothes are in a photo. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you can get away with pretty inexpensive clothes and the fabric doesn't have to be that great because for a photo, the style and the color is so important that in order to get that photo just right, then I would really go for style before quality in that case. Even if normally I would always say, go for the highest quality you can afford because that's going to be really work for you in the long run. So I live in a small town with hardly any shops at all. So I buy the a irony. lot. Of, oh I know, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I find a lot of my clothes at H&M. And I usually think, don't like the quality. I think like 99% of what they have is not the level of quality that I want. But I'm able to go in there and pick out those few amazing pieces. And people are like, oh my God, that must be a designer skirt. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> But, yeah, that was not expensive. Yeah. <laughs> hey, share with us, when did you start your business and how did you do your marketing and get your clients? Like that's the most important thing where you start getting testimonials where it's not just, yes, it's a testimonial, haha, -ha, the pun for that you're doing your work, what you're offering is actually valid but it boosts your ego because you're going, oh, what the idea I have is actually working. That's freaking awesome. So this was a two-way street. What were you doing? Networking? How did you meet your people? Because it's not always what you know, it's who you know. So yes, I actually started my business because my potential clients were asking me to get started because I was in this online program that taught you how to create an online business. And so I made all these friends and then that online teacher, Ramit Sadie, he had oh, a conference. Him. Yeah, he's great. He had a conference in New York. And so a lot of the women in the program were going to New York and they're like, Hilda, Hilda, I need your help. I don't know what to wear at the conference. So uh -huh. what I did was that I was like, I started my coaching program right then and there with women who wanted to look amazing at the conference. And it was really, I'm so happy to ask me because otherwise I would have postponed. I would have said, oh, I have to figure things out more before I get started. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, hang on. I need to be 10 kilos lighter before I do. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what I did was that I had a weekly coaching call with each of them. And then I created a module for each week. And then I made a friend. I wrote a guest post. That guest post, I thought it was a flop because I didn't get hardly any subscribers from it. But I met a person, a, pers a really amazing person, photographer Heidi Habanovich in Florida. And I started collaborating with her. And she said, Hilda, Hilda, 
when is your online course finished? Because I would love to use that as a bonus for my own course. Mm -hmm. And so she kicked me into creating my first course. And that's when I just took the modules from my coaching and turned those into a course. So everything worked really well. And I'm so happy for every single person who <laughs> pushed me. That's amazing. When was this? When did you start your business? This is about two years ago. Wow, that's really mm -hmm. fast, huh? So that went really fast from starting the business and then going, where's Hilda Fossen going? Like what levels is she going to? Are you content where you are at the moment? Or is there something brewing in the headquarters where you're like, ah, I think I'm going further with this one? Oh, where, yeah. where are you setting your sights on? <laughs> where are you going into? Sashka, I just love what you say. At the beginning of this interview, you say, well, you're fast and furious. I'm like, yeah, I'm fast and furious. <laughs> I'm going all the way. So I've been hiding out a little bit, uh, creating my machine in the background. Oh, I've been God. creating online products. I have all these opt-ins and email funnels and the whole system is working. So now I'm just going for publicity, getting my message out there and just finding all those women who really, really need my help because I really want everyone to fall in love with their soul, fall in love with their body and live a magnificent life. Do you think we can expect like some designs from Hilda? I think maybe you can. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got ghost parts, people. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, because what happens is that I can't find clothes for my own photo shoots. And I'm like, okay, so Hilda, you're the stylist. Your clothes need to be fantastic. So I've actually started working with a couple of local seamstresses. And so I design my own dresses. And every once in a while, things go wrong because I designed this amazing dress. It was hot pink and white, a like color blocking. And I couldn't find the fabric locally. So I actually had my husband, he was traveling. I had him go to all the fabric stores to find fabric. And he was like on the phone with me <laughs> in the fabric store. I was like, yeah, that pink, not that pink. And then I got this amazing silk fabric. But you know what happened, Sashka? Oh, no. The fabric was just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding color. So I washed it six times and I washed it with vinegar and did like every trick in the book and it just kept bleeding. So I could not sew a dress with some parts white and some parts pink because the white would get pink spots on it. So that was my local fabric store, which has nothing. And I was like, okay, Hilda, use your creativity. And then I noticed some kids fabric. There was like some kids fabric with all these cartoon things on them, like pow, poo, kapow. All these things. I was like, okay, that's very crazy. Aren't you supposed to be a serious businesswoman? But, <laughs> but I did get that fabric. And now I have this power woman shift dress oh, cool. that's, that's black with pow pow in the middle. And so it, it's just perfect because no one else in the world has that. So, uh, so cool. So whilst you're talking, I have an idea for you. So I was thinking maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but I think it's a cool idea. I was thinking maybe organizing a retreat for like 10 women and they come and have their wardrobe designed and you work with some young designers that are in schools or whatever because they can still design you because one person designing for 10 people is a lot of work. But if you get 10 designers and students, that's pretty cool. I'm like, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll have my wardrobe designed. <laughs> Sasha, it's a really, really incredible idea. And I would, I used to be a design teacher for a while. You know that? I designed, yeah, I taught all those amazing young fashion students. So I think this would be a great idea for a fashion school. They would get lots of publicity. Maybe we could get some big names there. So they would get extra publicity from that. It would be absolutely fantastic. Could be a competition. I love Thank you, Sashka. <laughs> it's a great idea. And I hope you're coming too. <laughs> I am. It's not that far away. I've always wanted to come to Sweden. One of my best friends are there. Now tell me, of all the niches and markets in the world, what made you decide to work with women entrepreneurs to spice up their personal look and style? Okay. So when I found my target market, I went about it very scientifically. <laughs> so unlike me, unlike me, <laughs> usually. I interviewed, for instance, I interviewed more than 20 Norwegian CEO women. And what was amazing was that all I realized that, okay, these women, they got so far without a stylist, they don't actually need it. They just wear what they wear. Some of them are well-dressed, some of them are not, but they don't actually need it. Then I started talking to young moms, young moms with a little baby, a lot of them had gained weight. So I know that's a potential market, but it just didn't click. There was a, yeah, I'm just wearing my yoga pants and I'm really happy. 
Okay, wonderful. I just love that. <laughs> I love that. I'm so happy for them. <laughs> so that's not my market. But then I was in a big Facebook group and people were asking for a stylist. Women entrepreneurs were asking for a stylist. I had not wanting to go into that market because like, I thought, okay, everyone, you're an online entrepreneur and then you sell to other entrepreneurs. It's so obvious. But it was just like when I went on the first call with someone from that market, someone I never met before, I just realized, oh my God, this is just like talking to my best friend. I just have to work with these people. They're just like me. I just love them to bits. And you know, it's been a love affair ever since. I love it. Those are the best things when things just move and you're just in a state of being and the doing is balanced. I don't like that word in harmony with the being. So that's pretty cool with a masculine feminine energy like that. So Hilda, we are at the end of our interview because super fast. So I have two questions that I ask for my guests at the end. One of them being, how do you want to change or challenge the world doing what you do? I want women to really fall head over heels in love with ourselves, mm. themselves. That's the most important thing. Lately, I've been reading a lot of Buddhist teachers and they all talk about love, love, love all the time. But then Sometimes at the end of the book, they mention that a lot of women already have that love angle. They need to love themselves, mm -hmm. but they also need to tap into their power. And this is a big revelation because they also say things like, okay, women are afraid of their own power. And I really recognize that for myself. And when I talk to my, sometimes I get into really deep conversation with my clients, even if we start talking about fashion. And this is definitely something that resonates with a lot of women. So tapping into both our love and our power, that's my mission. I love that. I love that. I'd love for you to fill in the gaps for three of my values, three of my core values and what they mean to you. So passion means for you. Passion is a road sign. <laughs> if you feel passionate about something, then that's a sign that, yes, this is what I need. This is where I need to go. Mm, I like that roadside. Creativity for you is? Creativity, to me, that's the meaning of life. You expressed it so amazingly just five minutes ago about how it's that state where you're just being. And when you're in the creative flow, you don't notice time flying. Sometimes you get all these words and ideas that you don't know where they come from. And that to me is the meaning of life. I love that. Wisdom for you is? I think wisdom also is tapping into your creativity, your passion, and who you really are. Because we can all learn a lot of technical things. We can learn strategies and tactics and all of that. But tapping into your truth, as uh, Oprah says, I think that is real wisdom. I love it. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Hilda. I've had a ball. I can't wait to speak to you about my personal styling. That's what I'm going into that direction. And thank you for honoring and following your gut feeling and intuition and doing what you do, because it's great. It's amazing serving all these wonderful women. And as we go over and out from this episode, I hope that everyone takes with them to love yourselves from the inside out and to express it as well. And you can get in contact with Hilda. You'll find out in the show notes where she is on social media, her website, her favorite book, her favorite quote. And hook up with her with her special, she has a special freebie, if I remember correctly, something about making a baby. Yes. <laughs> I'll just leave that up to the imagination for those to read and find out. Very exciting. Thank you so much, Hilda. Thank you so much for having me, Sashka. It's a pleasure. And everyone, see you all next week. And don't forget to be fast and furious. Love you all. Bye-bye. Dang, that was just super califragilistic expialidocious. I enjoyed having you on board and please do me and you a favor. Head on over to iTunes, SoundCloud or Stitcher. Click subscribe and a super bonus. Leave your review and you stand a chance of being announced and advertised on the show. I'm always striving to ensure that your brand is uplifted and empowered. Remember, done is better than perfect. So be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and send in your feedback too. You're the absolute best. Keep rocking.